First, uh, and uh, probably the most important one that we want to talk about is highlighting the importance of uh, prevention. Uh, in terms of prevention, uh, there are a few things that we're recommending. Um, one of the things relates to mosquito-borne countries, uh, specifically the, the Zika virus mosquito is the Aedes aegypti, uh, very prevalent in South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. So obviously if we have uh, patients that have traveled to areas uh, or will travel to areas that have uh, high incidence of cases and the mosquito and they're going to get exposed uh, and folks that live here in South Florida uh, should take the uh, needed preventative measures that include repellent use, uh, mosquito nets and uh, try to avoid uh, puddling water because that actually allows the multiplication of the, uh, of the mosquito. So the prevention is very important. Uh, diagnosis, uh, we should be talking about how to uh, early identify uh, patients that might have signs and symptoms in the diagnosis. Uh, Zika is a viral illness like uh, a lot of different viruses. It presents with a combination of different uh, signs and symptoms, uh, which include fever, headache, uh, uh, eye uh, injections or conjunctivitis, uh, muscle aches, and, and a rash. The uh, signs and symptoms of Zika are very similar to other uh, mosquito-borne il illnesses like dengue and chikungunya. So, uh, but fortunately, fortunately, only one out of five patients that actually have the Zika virus will present uh, the uh, concerning signs and symptoms, and only a handful of those will actually be sick enough uh, to need emergency care. But I think the diagnosis is important. Uh, uh, patients need to be aware of the signs and symptoms and after they feel they have uh, or suspect that they have uh, Zika virus, what we recommend is uh, for, them to approach, uh, for them to approach their local doctor, urgent care centers, emergency departments, and, uh, and get cared for. The diagnosis of uh, any patient is basically the same. So signs and symptoms like we explained, rash, fever, headache, uh, body aches. And uh, the protocol involves uh, identifying these patients and then notifying the uh, Department of Health authorities, uh, getting uh, urine or blood and or blood samples to test, specifically for Zika and other uh, conditions that we might be considering as part of the uh, differential diagnosis, and sending the test to the uh, uh, local labs here in, uh, in the state of Florida. Uh, the difference between pregnant and non-pregnant patients, the approach is the same. Uh, the risk uh, right now we're finding out that might be a little bit different uh, because uh, we're seeing a, a number of cases, a spike in cases associated with uh, congenital abnormalities, uh, specifically microcephaly or small heads in uh, babies of uh, patients, uh, pregnant females that contracted the Zika virus, specifically in, uh, in Brazil, Colombia, uh, especially in Brazil. But the diagnosis treatment is the same, and uh, we want to highlight uh, prevention. We want to highlight uh, preventative strategies and try to avoid uh, contracting the disease. And uh, from a, uh, a personal standpoint, one of the things we want to highlight and recommend is if, if you're pregnant, try to avoid traveling to um, high uh, peak areas for Zika virus. Uh, because that obviously generates a uh, potential risk. So, so what's fortunate is that the uh, treatment is supportive. Uh, what we do is that you want to, uh, th there are two kinds of patients. Patients are going to be slightly symptomatic and patients are going to be very symptomatic. Uh, any kind of infectious disease, depending on your body, your condition, your immune system, you can have a, uh, uh, from a very subtle response to a very aggressive response. Uh, for the majority of patients, the majority of patients are going to be asymptomatic. For the majority of patients that are symptomatic, the treatment is supportive, which involves hydration and fever control and symptomatic care. So water uh, and Tylenol? Water and Tylenol. Try to avoid aspirin uh, because there is a complication associated with aspirin use uh, called uh, Reyes syndrome uh, that you don't want. Uh, it's not specific to Zika. It's actually um, a, a condition that you get in uh, various uh, infectious conditions and the use of aspirin. Uh, but what we're recommending is water and Tylenol for sure. Uh, and obviously, uh, if you're uh, significantly sick, uh, faint, um, feeling uh, what we call toxic, feeling very ill, uh, then there might be a possibility of uh, admission to the hospital for further care.